All right, we're into our second session of day two of Bitcoin for corporations. My name is Fong Lee. I'm the president and CFO of MicroStrategy, and I have here with me Brett Tedgepal. Brett, you want to do a quick introduction? Sure, thanks. Um, really, really uh, excited to be with you uh, again, uh, Fong. So I'm Brett Tejpal. I've been with Coinbase nearly a year. I look after sales, trading, custody, and prime, along with my partner, Greg Tusar, who runs inst institutional product for us. And I joined Coinbase after a 25 year career and working at uh, Barclays and JP Morgan. And at Barclays, I was serving as the global head of sales for fixed income and equities. And I was a part of the executive committee that looked after global sales and trading for all of our businesses. And so over that 25 year career, um, I was, um, I, I largely focused on uh, helping institutional investors uh, get involved in new asset classes. And so uh, crypto is really just an, ex an extension uh, of that for me. Awesome. Well, so you know this session is Bitcoin for corporations and uh, it seems like you're the perfect person uh, from Coinbase, but even prior to that, you know, working with institutions and corporations. Uh, why don't you just start with it? You know, I think most of our audience here probably knows Coinbase, but why don't, why don't you start with just giving everyone a little bit of background about Coinbase, uh, what you do and specifically what you do for institutions and corporations. Thanks. So we're predominantly known for our retail app, but one of the things I, I hope to highlight in this session is that we have a, an amazing platform for institutional uh, investors. And so Coinbase Institutional is an integrated solution that marries custody, our advanced trading platform and prime services. Um, so to give you some stats on, on sort of what that translates into, uh, we have 43 million uh, verified users. We've got over 90 billion of assets on the platform. We have 1200 employees. We've got more than 40 assets uh, that we trade and you can custody uh, assets with us that don't trade on our platform. And we have, we have 90 assets there. And so uh, to, to hit a few sort of distinctive traits about us, I would say our, our trading desk works on an agency basis. And so I think we've got the market leading platform, which you used <laughs> time and again uh, to achieve the best price. And one of the best things about that platform is that We've, we've got um, pure agency. So what that means for the audience is we don't make prices. And so our interests are aligned with yours. We just get a flat commission. So that ensures the fact that every time you come to us to try and buy or sell, you're getting the best price from, um, from, from a big pool of liquidity. Awesome. So 90 billion in assets, which is just really a staggering number. Uh, tell us about how, you, how that distributes uh, retail versus institutional versus corporate. Uh, I know you're in a quiet period. Uh, anything you can share with us around sort of the growth rates that you're seeing, especially on the institutional side, would be great to hear. Yeah, so actually, thanks for reminding me. I, I probably should have said it at the outset. Um, most of the people watching probably know that Coinbase has followed its S1. And as a consequence, we're in a quiet period. And so anything that's sort of beyond the stats that I shared at the, at the top there that would lead to sort of uh, forward-looking comments on sort of the price of Bitcoin or the growth of the platform, um, I'm not going to be able to address, but what I can address today and what's going to be awesome is to really go into uh, the product platform and, and the suite of services that we offer. And so um, I, I would say one of the distinctive um, qualities of, of, of Coinbase is the sort of holistic nature. So we can be a one-stop shop. So we are the, the single point of entry you know, into the crypto marketplace. And so we've, we've, we've done quite a lot of work to make the prime a one-stop shop. So what that means is you, you can buy there. Once you buy, there's a, um, a, a there's a white glove service associated with buying. You, you, you can uh, move that into custody with us. And then for our active uh, our, our active customers that buy and sell quite a lot of, of crypto, we actually provide financing as well. And so that's another distinctive uh, strength of ours. So there's no time delay. And, and, and the more that we offer these, this, these suite of services, the more we've been rewarded by clients clustering uh, their businesses with us. But that said, and, and actually in, in Michael's description yesterday of Coinbase, he described it as an open platform. And I think that is that is an important thing to note. While we do have bundled services, each, each, of our, each of our offerings has to stand alone on its own. And so we'll have crypto first customers that will come in just to use execution or custody or you know, our, our other services. And so uh, the way we approach it is we'd love to give bundled services to, to corporates um, and, and hedge funds and pensions and endowments that want to, but at the same time, each one of those things has to stand on its own. And so, so any, any customer can sort of pick or choose 
on how they want to put together, um, how they want to uh, engage with the Coinbase platform. Great. Uh, so, so maybe let, let's dig a little deeper on, on the corporate side, right? Um, tell us what does the customer base look like, right? Like who are you talking to? Uh, you know, are these large corporations? Are these institutional investors? Are these family offices? Like. What have you seen change over change in the last year in terms of that customer base? So I'd say that we, we've had, um, there have been certain types of institutional clients that have long been invested in the space. And when, when I think about uh, those customer types, I, I'll call sort of pensions and endowments. Um, I, I would say they're new mm -hmm. entrants, uh, you being the most famous of, of all of them uh, as a corporate that took the bold dis, uh, decision to, to, to buy Bitcoin in, in your treasury reserve. As a consequence, uh, You've you've uh, you've uh, showed the path. I, I loved your presentation yesterday on sort of the the, the playbook. You you know together we wrote the playbook really uh, on how a corporation uh, can get involved and should get involved in in the space. And so there are definitely uh, corporates which are interested in um, you know thinking you know watching what you did and and building upon it. Um, other other entrants to the space would be um, hedge funds. I, I think they've had a greater presence through the course of this year. Um, and soon to be more asset managers as well. So you, you, you probably will have seen a case study that I wrote on LinkedIn about One River, for example, uh, as a good example of a new entrant to the space. Right. Uh, so someone is a corporation. They're a potentially new customer, right? They're, they're just thinking about getting into cryptocurrency and Bitcoin investments. Like, what, what do they do first, right? And, you know, and, and they're looking at the landscape of potential uh, partners to work with. What, what's their first step when they call you up? What, what does that customer journey look like? Right. So, um, and we again, we went through this together. Uh, so you'll remember it well, hopefully. But um, you, you should have an expectation um, of a corporate first uh, of meeting someone like me or, or someone on the team. So you've got um, a person that's uh, operated at scale and in um, a regulated environment. So you, you've got a single point of contact. Uh, you would expect to get onboarded in, let's say, um, two days is probably a, a good expectation. Um, in order to get onboarded, you have to pass through KYC and AML, so you have to be in good standing, and we do a pretty robust uh, diligence on that. It's an important part of who we are you know, in this space. I find that you know, public corporations and large institutional clients want to be in good company, right? and, and, and they want to engage with blue chip names uh, that uh, are, are very serious about um, um, KYC and AML. In that introductory meeting, we would remind you that we are a qualified custodian regulated by the DFS. We were the first custodian to get its SOC 1 um, um, reports. We can talk more about what, the, what those are. It's a, probably a level of granular detail we don't need to get into. We would introduce you to the fact that we've got the largest crypto um, insurance policy that's out there, um, to the best of my knowledge, at least. Um, and we would we would we would start by saying, hey, you know, what are you trying to achieve, and how can we help? And so often, Fong, in those, we're doing a lot of learning all at the same time. So there's a little bit of uh, tell us more about perhaps Bitcoin or Ethereum and how it works, and we've got people that can jump on the phone and give you educational uh, resources to go around that. And that is, how does it work? Right? So so should I want to be be involved? What happens? And so the big picture on that is you probably have two accounts with us. You, you would have, you can think of it as a, as, as a prime account. That's the place where you, you buy and sell. And then you, you, you most probably have a, just a custodial account as well. And so that would be the beginning of, of, of getting corporates activated. So the quickest thing I've seen corporates activate is, is about you know, 48 hours, um, where there are um, a few things to draw out on. While we've got um, the ability to onboard rapidly, one of the things that we're obsessed about is security. And you, you'll remember going through the process, you know, with us, where we um, we, we we place a paramount importance on, on security, particularly when any fiduciary like yourself is, is acting on behalf of shareholders or, or or somebody else. And so we'll go through sort of a coaching where we say, you know, here's the account opening, your account's now open, uh, but we'd really like to see you put these extra security uh, measures in place. And so we've got recommendations in and around how to do that. We'll, we'll guide you towards doing a first test trade, but not until you've done the security, the hardening of, of, of your security. And you'll remember that we also have a, a white glove uh, service for corporate officers 
right? So beyond beyond their ability to act for the corporate, um, we, we also have the ability to, to coach you through personal security as well. So once all the security measures have, have, we can see that they've been put in place, then we'll guide you towards a test transaction, which is probably the first time you might wire you know, fiat money, you know, into, in, into, into Coinbase and then do a test transaction just to kick the tires to see if everything works. And, then, and there we'll, we'll, we'll initiate a trade. You'll, you'll, you'll see, you'll settle your first trade where you've bought, let's say one Bitcoin, and then we'll send that into custody. And so that's a great way to start. And it, it, it's, a, it's a sort of, um, you can progress quickly, but it's important to me uh, to make sure that everyone feels comfortable with the progression and the execution. Awesome. Uh, I mean, 48 hours is, is actually re really fast. So, so that, that's great. Um, what, what is, other than security, what are the other big concerns or challenges that some of your customers, some of your corporate customers might face when trying to onboard to the platform and start trading? Yeah, the onboarding is actually um, um, pretty slick and pretty quick. But when we, when we go through the protocols of who can do what to whom, and so one of the things that corporates, you know, and we're obsessed about is making sure that only the right people are doing the right things. And so sometimes it takes a little extra time to think through, you know, who at MSDR has the ability to, you know, send and receive crypto, right? You, you undertake practices like white labeling, which is to say you lock down an account to say crypto and fiat can only travel between these two destinations and nowhere else, right? And so there's a little bit of thinking, I think, that the the corporates have to go through to say like who in our hierarchy, uh, it's not just gonna be the CEO, CFO and COO for obvious reasons. And so you talked a little bit about that in, in your corporate playbook yesterday. And so really, I would say that's not a challenge. It's, that's just like an extra level of, of diligence that, that you have to go through. And then all the, thing, all the other things you outlined in your playbook are on thinking through uh, public disclosure and, 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 and other associated items that you addressed yesterday. Okay, great. We, we have quite a few uh, international attendees uh, on the call and watching too. Uh, to just, just help them understand, you know, where are you licensed to, to, to do business? What are the jurisdictions? Uh, and, and what does that landscape look like for, for Coinbase? So domestically, we're a qualified custodian. We're a limited purpose New York Trust company regulated by the DFS. I mentioned before, we have SOC 1 um, type 2 and SOC 2 type 2 reports. So that means that we can we can deliver into our regulatory obligation. Um, we operate in over 100 countries, uh, so that's important. Um, we are a fiduciary under New York banking law, um, so again, important. We're in compliance with the Bank Secrecy Act, the U.S. Patriot Act. We have money transmission uh, laws. Uh, we're, we're a money transmitter in the United States and in many other um, jurisdictions. And so you can think about at a high level, we've got a domestic offering. And we have an international offering, high level. Uh, we, we, we have entities um, in different jurisdictions around the world, including Ireland. Um, and we have um, um, a, a duplicate offering in both places. So, so really, aside, aside from the different uh, regulatory licenses that we hold, you can think of it as a, a duplicate offering. Um, so, so one mirrors the other in terms of its security, its protocols, its robustness, its operational excellence. And so if you're an international client, then you have the ability to um, consume all of our goods and services internationally without ever having uh, a nexus to uh, the domestic United States. Great. Uh, that's pretty, pretty robust and pretty, pretty broad overall. Um, so, so, you know, Bitcoin for corporations, a lot of folks here either already invested in crypto or are seriously considering it. Uh, what advice would you give them? Um, I guess what I would say to choose your partners carefully uh, for, for, for a start. Uh, I would, of course, offer ourselves as being a, a trusted partner. I would say uh, re really, again, sort of echoing some of your comments, Fong, uh, and echoing some of what you did, um, definitely do survey the landscape, right? And, and, and try and root out where you think there could be conflicts of interest or, or, or different things that you might want to avoid. Um, for an example, we, the crypto marketplace is in many ways unique, but I think you want to take certain protocols and find certain partners to keep you safe. And so one of the things that, that we do, our smart order uh, routing platform looked, is a liquidity aggregator. 
So it looks not just the Coinbase exchange, but you know, 10 other venues. But, but what we've done is we've, we've done diligence on each one of those venues to make sure that we think that those venues uh, adhere to the same KYC and, and AML practices. So, so we don't just route it to, 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 to any exchange. So that, that, I think that's pretty important. The next thing uh, I would say is to really um, see if you can get radical transparency around fees. <laughs> so, so there's a, a, a again, uh, I was a, uh, I took note of Jeremy's sort of comments yesterday about trying to sort of turn the screws on, on crypto and, and, and get good fee discounts, which uh, of course you did. Um, but I would say our, our pricing model is like very, very clear, very transparent. So agency is you, you buy or sell something, you just pay a flat commission fee and that's it. And on, on custody, you just pay uh, an, an amount of um, a fee paid in basis points per annum. And there's no other embedded fees, like there's no fees until you go to withdraw, for example. And so really understanding the fee architecture is important. And then I think you need to think through, you know, does this, does this partner operate at scale? You know, who, who else have they done trades for? Do they have a history of operational excellence? You know, do they, you know, ha have they delivered? And so that, 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 you know, an invitation from you to be in this event and talking through it after you chose us, you know, exclusively to be your execution partner, I think says volumes. And so we, we continue to, when it's appropriate, disclose, you know, others that we've worked with. But I think we, we're, we're beginning to develop quite a track record of getting the best price and, the, and sort of the best service and the best overall result for large institutions that want to operate at scale. Okay, great. Well, you sort of did it and summarized it, but, but well, you did it. Maybe you can just sort of really quickly summarize then. Uh, you know, as someone is considering, let's call it an execution partner, uh, what are the key differentiators that Coinbase has? The three or four things that you would pitch to somebody and say, look, this is what we do. Nobody does it better. So uh, that's exactly. So I'm going to take your pitch line. And uh, yeah, so Coinbase is the single entry point. Uh, it is the go-to uh, partner for institutions for sure. So Coinbase Prime is, um, is a full service prime broker. So we do custody, trade execution, and lending all in one place. Um, we also provide credit intermediation. Uh, and so I know that's, a, that's something that not everyone may understand precisely what that means is, but we, we, we act on your behalf when you go into the marketplace. So, so what that means is we are the only institution that you have to do diligence on. So, so I, I'm gonna get quite specific here. Um, if you engage our trading operation and tell us to go buy Bitcoin on someone else's exchange because they've got the best price in that millisecond, we'll do that to the extent that there was an unexpected interruption and there was some, you know, some exchange went down, there was an outage or principal loss, um, Coinbase would, would, would um, insulate you from that, which is to say, we'll take that risk. So you wouldn't lose principal risk. So once we return back inside the walled garden successfully having bought, let's say a Bitcoin, it's at that moment that we actually exchange you have the Bitcoin and then you send that to cold storage. And so it, in, in sort of banking terms, that's what an in, intermediation is. Coinbase is the one place that you enter the marketplace and we go out and get your best, best price. But while we're out there and while we're transacting, if something unfortunate were to occur, we insulate you from that, from that, from that risk. So that's really important. I yeah. think, yeah. No, no, sorry, go, go, go ahead, Brett. Yeah, and, and so the other thing that we do is uh, we, 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 you know, in, in, in considering who you would choose as, as a partner, uh, the strength of our financial condition and balance sheet is really important, right? And, and as a function of that, we can provide, um, we can provide financing. And so for, for active traders that want to trade in a moment's notice, they want to either buy something or sell something, we have the, we have the ability to, to, to make that happen. And so that's super important. Um, again, I think it's a, a defining feature for us. I think our smart order aggregation, our liquidity ag aggregation is, is, is fantastic. Um, hopefully, maybe I can get you to comment on that. But um, we, we, we do have the ability, you know, uh, to find the best possible price uh, of any cryptocurrency, you know, in that, in that millisecond and transact with it. And so that's important. Um, we give you um, anonymity. So, so large, large corporations don't want to be detected that they're in the marketplace, right? Um, and even if you want to engage with block liquidity through my OTC desk, you can do that as well, but it remains anonymous, right? And, and you know that having having gone in 
bought a, a load of Bitcoin and, and, and not had that leaked to the marketplace. And so no one knew that we were in the marketplace. So we have the ability to disguise large orders uh, by chopping up into really, really small pieces. And so you can, when, when you're buying in increments of you know, 50, 100, 200 million, we might do actually millions of trades that are out there. And that's the way in which we disguise your presence in the marketplace. So I think that's uh, the, definitely one of our uh, differentiating features. Another one is just the, I, I said it once, but I'll say it again. Uh, it, it's our agency only approach. And so we don't have a conflict of interest of trying to route to an in-house you know, market maker, for example, or give preference to one location over another. So um, if, 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 if our, our only goal is to get you the best possible price at all time. So not, no conflicts is, is, is really important. Um, the fact that we operate at such large scale um, in, in custody, I think is important. So I think you know, corporations want to know that if they're going to buy a significant amount of um, you know, cryptocurrency, digital assets, that they're keeping it uh, in a safe place. And I, I think the, the 90 billion plus, I think speaks to that. Um, the other thing I, I think I'd like to draw out is, and, and this is part of um, the Coinbase institutional brand getting more recognition, is that we're a, we're a business to business crypto infrastructure provider, right? So, so we, we, we have uh, introducing brokers in the platform. So think like challenger banks, think payments platforms, and so if, you, if, if, if you're a corporation that wants to activate maybe for different use cases other than treasury, for example, if you wanted to give your end clients the ability to buy, sell, store crypto, you can actually come to Coinbase. Uh, and, and so we offer that crypto infrastructure provider and we're publicly disclosed that we, we, we act on behalf of firms like SoFi and, and Revolut and there's a, a long list uh, thereafter. And so... Two other things I call out is, is the white label service, uh, sorry, is the white glove service. So you've got you know, someone like myself uh, to talk to 24 seven. So our OTC desk runs you know, around the clock, uh, but, but having, particularly if you're unfamiliar with this space, I mean, I, I don't know how many hours we spoke when you were sort of ramping, ramp, ramping up between you, your team, your extended team, the legal team, the treasury team, there's quite a lot of dialogue in there. Uh, and then, I think I'd end on uh, two things, which is security and insurance. So security is literally, we would describe ourselves first as a security company and then all, all other things next. And so we have arguably the largest, um, the, the largest full-time staff of cryptographic and security engineers. And then insurance, you know, again, I mentioned it once again, but you know, Coinbase is your first line of, Coinbase, our security protocols is your first line of defense. But, but should that fail, you've got you know, insurance, the largest insurance policy as a backup. Well, that's a lot of differentiators, but I, I can attest to uh, you know, using Coinbase as our primary uh, trading partner, uh, that, that the white glove experience uh, is really there. You, know, you, you made yourself available and your team available uh, and the onboarding experience you, because of the white glove experience was, was very good. Uh, and, and so that was great. Uh, we just have a few minutes left. Uh, so you made a big transition. Uh, you know, you really went from, uh, call it sort of the banking world to, to the Bitcoin world or the crypto world. How's it been for you personally? <laughs> it's been, I, I, um, I, I gave a presentation last night at Coinbase and I opened up by saying that I've been here 10 months and it's, it's been the most exhilarating and fun and enjoyable uh, 10 months of my professional career. Um, it, it, it's, it's so super cool and awesome. I, I really feel like we're changing the world. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. So uh, I think things you know, operate at scale, at pace, um, which is fantastic. Another sort of unexpected benefit was I thought there might be a longer transition bet between sort of leaving my old world and all the institutional clients that I, I was, you know, spent 25 years developing relationships with. But now in, in this world, uh, it's really great to see that so many of them are present. And, and, and are continuing to sort of activate in the space. And so that's been awesome. All right. Well, Brett, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for Coinbase's partnership and uh, best of luck, uh, especially with the upcoming uh, IPO. Thanks, Vaughn. It's, it, it's amazing to be here. I think what you're doing with this event, what Michael's done you know, yesterday with his promotion of, of, of Bitcoin, uh, I think it's awesome and uh, unselfish and amazing of you to uh, publish the corporate playbook. Um, I think it's great for the industry, great for everyone involved, and really super excited to, to, to be part of this event. Well, thank you. We're, we're super excited, too. And thank you for all the audience. And uh, thanks, Brett. Take care.
Okay, thanks. Bye.